Now, when I go to Article 2.2, okay, what does it specify? If you remember, Article 2.1 of the India Netherlands Treaty said that it applies to taxes on income and capital, right? Now, what shall be regarded as taxes on income and on capital is something which is provided by Article 2.2. Let us read that. There shall be regarded as taxes on income and on capital all taxes imposed on total income, on total capital, right? So any tax which is imposed on total income, any tax which is imposed on total capital. Now, what is the meaning of income here? Generally, the word income is not defined in the treaty. Therefore, you can consider for Indian income tax purposes at least, the definition which is given in section 2, subsection 24 of the Income Tax Act for the purpose of ascertaining what are the taxes which are imposed on total income, on total capital or on elements of income or of capital. Now here, it might just be that the entire income is itself taxable. So let's say when I talk dividend or interest for that matter, you know, that is an income on which the entire tax is levied. Or it could be income which is paid where only an element of income is involved, right? But in both the cases, there has to be some income. So if there are any taxes which are imposed on total income, or total capital or elements of total income or total capital these are covered here one thing which stands out from what we discussed right now is that the basis on which the tax is calculated should be income before it can be covered in this article and it includes taxes on gains from alienation alienation is transfer of movable or immovable property, something like what we call as capital gains, taxes on the total amount of wages or salaries paid by the enterprises. So if an Indian company pays salary to a foreign individual and on this it applies taxes, those taxes as well as taxes on capital appreciation. This we are going to discuss a little in bit later but what this implies is suppose I have an asset of $100 I do not sell it but the value of this goes up to $110 then there is a capital appreciation that I have over here right in India specifically you do not have taxes on capital appreciation but if there is a tax on capital appreciation which is levied by Netherlands when the payment is made to an Indian company then an Indian company for the purpose of computing or ascertaining what is tax can also include that tax on capital appreciation. Now which taxes are covered? What we discussed right now in article 2.2, what are the taxes which are covered? It is all taxes imposed on income or capital, taxes imposed on element of income or of capital, taxes on gain from alienation of movable or immovable property, taxes on wages and salaries paid by enterprises, and taxes on capital appreciation. So what is taxes on income and capital? Income should be here considered as per section 224 of the IT Act 1961 for Indian tax purposes. Right? It should generally exclude property taxes or taxes which is computed on a basis other than income. Now, whether tax includes interest or penalty, the answer to that is a generally a no, like we discussed earlier as well in one of the treaties that it excludes in India-US treaty. We just saw that, that it, exclu it excludes any penalties which are applicable or interest paid for default in payment of taxes. Capital appreciation, while the UN model consider it as taxes, in India, we generally do not consider it as a tax. And excluded taxes means what? You may come across situation where Article 2.2 may specify that it shall exclude certain category of taxes. 
which means that if the article specifies that in India this particular tax is not going to be considered as tax then you have to exclude it. Now in order to have a complete picture of this uh, I have also included the article 2.2 of the India USA treaty and this has a slightly different wording vis-a-vis -vis what we just saw in the India Netherlands treaty. The convention shall apply also to any identical or substantially similar taxes. Now there is a difference between the word identical and substantially similar. Right? Identical would mean exactly the same. Substantially similar would cover a case where there is a tax, let's say X, which is income tax. Tomorrow, there is another tax which is levied. Let's call that tax as Y, which has the same basis of computation, okay? And same maybe the manner of computation, right? So the convention shall also apply to any identical or substantially similar taxes which are imposed after the date of signature of the convention. So normally the purpose of this is that if today, let's say on 1-1-1996, India enters into a particular treaty. After this date, if India imposes some other tax which is identical or substantially similar to the original tax, in our example, let's say if X were a tax which were to exist on 1-1-1996 and then Y was levied on let's say 31-3-97, right? Then if it is substantially similar or identical to tax X in terms of manner of computation, the people to whom it applies, then in, if it is this new tax is in addition to or in place of the existing taxes, so you can have a situation where X goes off only Y remains or both X and Y exist together, right? This article shall also apply to the new tax which is so identical or substantially similar. The competent authorities of the contracting states shall notify each other of any significant changes, the word significant is important, which have been made in their respective taxation laws and of any official published material concerning the application of convention. If there is any change which is significant vis-a-vis -vis these taxes, then the contracting state's competent authorities are under an obligation to inform the other state about such changes.